been a while. I didn't do that last week. So oh. I had to go through it trying to find the right oh, sink. Oh, the right peak pe- yeah. sink. Oh, that's fucked up. Why did you do it last week? I don't know. I just forgot. I managed to find it okay. This though. stays in, by the way. This is part of it. Part of the, <laughs> the podcast? The clap is part. Of, that's the beginning of the show now. If you didn't know, <laughs> this is... <laughs> SSWL Network. Are we actually starting to relate this right now? Yeah. Okay. Why well, not? welcome to the show. To some shit we like. Episode number. How did 243. I already forget? Two forty-three. Okay, two forty-three. Two forty-three. <laughs> um. So welcome back. I see we have a Mike. new addition to the show since I've been gone. To the family. Since I've been gone. I guess we got a new microphone. I really like that song, by the way. <laughs> That's a great song. Okay. That album is actually pretty good, by the way. I just heard that yeah. song. Um, yeah, uh, you weren't here to see the no. person that we got this new midnight blue yeah, it's really, on black it's really pretty. Uh, microphone. I was going to do a whole unboxing of it uh-huh. for my channel, but I ended up not doing it. So I saw when you guys were live streaming from Studio A, and I saw the, the microphone. I was like, oh, Rick broke down and got a new microphone. All right, that's cool. That's cool. But then I was like... I was wondering, because you didn't make any comment towards it. Well, because... Like in Voxer or anything. Yeah. Like, wow. So, like, I you saw, don't really care. And then I was sitting there watching, <laughs> and it wasn't the live stream. It was like the archive. After you guys were done, you didn't um, take down the YouTube video right away. Mm-hmm. So that's what I ended up catching. That's and true. so I was watching it, and and it said like, oh, something like babysitting a new Yeti or something. I think is what you, we, we called it. Yeti. Yeah. And oh. so nursing a new Yeti, that's what it was. And I was like, oh, cool. Maybe he'll talk about it. And so I'm sitting there, and it's like five minutes go by. You haven't, said, sh- you, you, yeah, you haven't said shit <laughs> about it. And then like, 10 minutes go by. I'm like, okay, he still hasn't talked about the new microphone. It's just sitting there. All right, fine. I guess he's not going to talk about it. So then I stopped watching and came back and, and caught up later. But you never actually really talked about it too much? We did. Did you? Okay. Mm. I don't, I, more than just, is. hey, we got a new microphone. No, like, we did. In the okay. full podcast. I think because uh, if you watched the clip, yeah. um, or did you watch the full No, po- I watched the video. The that you, yeah. Pretty sure we huh, talked about okay. it. Okay. Maybe I just missed it. Maybe it was like deeper into the conversation. Okay. Um, so I think we did get sidetracked. Yeah. As we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. I've I've been really looking at those because I really like this. Is such a good microphone, and it's good for um, on the road recording. Yeah. If you, it is if you have. It's you, bulky. Yes, but, but as far but it, as as functionality goes, you put it in like between play. people, and you can't beat that. Yeah. You can't you can't beat that, man. Because like I I like my microphone a lot, and it'll work for two people if you have it set right here. And you're both kind of facing it, and it picks yeah. up really nicely. But I really do like the versatility of this microphone a lot. And I don't think uh, Blue has another one that versatile, because all their other ones are all um, monodirectional. Um, true. Like they the did s- come out with a new one though. The Spark is really nice, but it's monodirectional. Even though it looks like it should be bidirectional. Is that, that tiny one, right? Yeah. That's like. 200 bucks or yeah that? yeah okay yeah, it looks cool. like it should be bi-directional because it's a flat piece like this and it's got a screen on both yeah. sides but it's not it's oh it's still wonder yeah yeah oh. one hmm. directional one directional <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh but yeah uh but yeah i really like the yeti i just wish they would fucking update this thing and put at know, least on, at least I love a micro guys. usb on this thing come on guys they gotta have some fucking mini and uh yeah, like I forgot. Well, I think we talked about it a lot in the last podcast, yeah. but yeah, it's hard to find those, those connections cables. anymore because no one has them. Nope, you have to go to Mono Price if you want a long one, and yeah. even then, it's going to be hard to find. Uh, Which but, I'm going to have to buy one too with the whole new redecorated of the studio. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's going to be <laughs> happening, huh? It's going to be happening soon where we can just come sit down. I record. And are you be gonna done Are you gonna record so you can time lapse us doing the project later? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's okay. a whole vlog. In okay, itself. all right, yeah. all right, good, good, good. Yeah, I bought a table yeah. recently. I went to IKEA. Spoilers. Oh yeah, spoilers. Um, yeah, I went to IKEA for the first time yesterday, like ever. Like I've never been to IKEA. This was my first time, and I really didn't know what to expect. And holy shit, you could spend hours in that store. I've been into an IKEA once, but it was for a very short period of time, so I didn't get to explore. I was younger though. Oh yeah, dude. It's we. I was there with Tanya, and we probably spent like two and a half hours in there. Jesus, really? And, and you think time will like drag, but it just doesn't because there's yeah. like all these different things you can explore, and then it just makes you think like, oh my god, like this is giving me a bunch of ideas on how to change the room and how to change the studio, you know, <laughs> make it look nice here, more modern. 
And uh, yeah, but um, it was all right. Went to uh, get the food, the Swedish meatballs. Okay. Um, they're all right. I think they're a little overhyped. Meatballs are meatballs. But I'm not yeah, a fan. If you, of if you meat- like meatballs, you like meatballs. Balls. If you don't like meatballs, you don't like meatballs. Yeah. Like I had the chicken meatballs. I did try the actual beef meatballs. I don't like the beef meatballs. I mean, it was okay. Mm-hmm. I think it's just like the gravy, like kind of gives it that flavor. Yeah. Um, it's not Ryan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's just that gravy that gives it the flavor. Um, overall, it was a fun time though. Very cool. Very uh, I cool. vlogged it, so if you want, go to my channel and you'll see a full vlog of it. Hopefully, Eventually. sometime this week. <laughs> Eventually. I'm back in. I'm back in deep of the heart of Orange County, Ugh. so. I don't know if I'm going to bring my laptop. I probably should bring my laptop and just edit at work. Yeah, I so. saw you were doing that this week also, right? Earlier this week? Earlier this week? Yeah, you said you were editing in public or something. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. Last, uh, last week. Last uh, week, yeah. Or Monday, Monday, yeah. yeah. It was a holiday. Uh, I went to go uh, eat uh, lunch with my dad and took my laptop with me. I was at the mall and just editing there. All right, John Hill, <laughs> chill out. Jeez. <laughs> <clears throat> um, it is nice, you know. I kind of do like it now. Yeah. Like there was a time where I would go in public or mm-hmm. whatever and edit. Um, especially with the times where I was at LMU, um, and I kind of stopped liking it. Cause, like I'm editing stuff with my face in it, and, like people yeah, walk by. by. It's like <laughs> okay, but I think you just stop giving a shit. Oops. I think and you just stop giving a shit. I think you know, that, and, that goes hand in hand with the vlogging in public thing too. Like you eventually yeah. will get over, got over that for the most part. For the most part. The I'm most still part. kind of iffy about it. You're better when there's somebody else with you. So I can like, do yeah. it when I'm with someone, yeah. Even if, even if they aren't saying anything, even if they're just walking next to you, yeah. it, it's definitely more comfortable for you. Yeah. Like I was just watching um, Hank Green. Uh, uh-huh. Because he's on his way over to, well, he's already there, but uh, to Australia for VidCon Australia, which I was oh, hoping to be at. But... VidCon Australia, why? It's unnecessary. VidCon Australia, unnecessary? No, to, for, for you to oh, go for to VidCon go Australia. Not really. I mean, I have two friends in oh, Australia okay, via right. the all community right, of, right. that I'm in. Okay. Not only that, she won the contest of uh, I'm a Creator contest. Mm-hmm. So now she gets to go up on the main stage stage and show her oh that's her cool videos. that's nice so she's doing a whole presentation thing beth boulevard check her out she does amazing like artistic video style poetry mm-hmm. in a sense but uh, her stuff is really good um she just hit 2000 subscribers actually very cool so but yeah i was hoping to go maybe see a koala or a kangaroo <laughs> how typical i know yeah a but wallaby a wallaby uh that's what Rocco is right. Yes, I think it's yes. a wallaby. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of ranted on that. But okay. yeah, I was hoping to be there. It'd have been nice. I, to I mean, that would have been a fun trip and a cool traveling thing. But I don't know how. Well, like from what I've heard, Amsterdam was all right. It mm-hmm. wasn't as good, of course, as the one in Anaheim. But uh, but I think there's more intimacy when you go when they talked about Amsterdam. I think the, so. the main issue, and I think uh, other conventions like PAX, like the Penny Arcade Expo, video game convention. Which I would convention, like to go to. I would love to go to that too. But they're they're killing their own market by having so many different ones. They've got one in Austin. Like they've got West, one in Boston. East. They've got one in Seattle. Yeah. They had one in Australia at one point, but they didn't do it. They haven't done it again. But like, if when you have one convention, mm-hmm. and everybody makes it a point to be like, yo... This is the convention. We're gonna go. We're all. We're gonna make plans. We're gonna make a trip around it. We're gonna go to this convention. I think you have a better cross section of people at that one rather than all these different regional ones. Like, yes, that's nice for some outliers who won't make the trek. Can't make the trip. Yeah. But I think it also cannibalizes the diversity of your main one by having all these different regional ones. I don't know. I. I kind of see it. I mean, like I see it as a giving the uh, giving opportunity to people who can't make it to the yeah. main one. Then, like, because there'll, there'll always be benefits to going to the main. Then, then do that every other year. You know what I mean? Or just make it traveling, kind of like what TwitchCon is doing. Well, no, but I'm saying like, if you're gonna do like the smaller ones, if you want to call them smaller ones, don't do them every year like you do your big one. Do it like um, do it every other year. 
build some anticipation to be like, oh, when's it coming back to Australia? All right, it's coming back in 2019. I'm gonna make my plans and and hit that up instead of having to go to Anaheim or wherever else. That would actually be a pretty good idea. Give it two years to plan it. Yeah, you know, so that gives people have more time to plan and make it as big as one in Anaheim. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, I mean. If you're watching VidCon, I'm available for marketing Pink, consulting. Pink John, <laughs> if you're watching. If you need some marketing consulting, I'm sure you already have it, but... Yeah. I guess right now, I mean, it is the first time, so they're yeah. testing the waters. Okay. Um, they're testing the waters. Um, if it, I think if it gets more than they anticipated, I'm sure it'll be bigger. I guess... I mean... Because there was a lot of people at Amsterdam. To play devil's advocate to my own point, I guess having hundreds of regional comic book conventions around the United States doesn't cannibalize San Diego's and New York's but Mm -mm. I don't know yeah that's its whole ballpark yeah I think think San Diego Con is complete an animal a different animal to itself yeah it's not really a comic book you know we missed Long Beach yeah it was last weekend last weekend yeah yeah Yeah. it's weird I totally forgot about it Long Beach it would have been nice to go to it's kind of fluctuated in time of year when it is I think so. It's like sometimes the end of October or yeah. early in the year. I could have swore like at one point, when, when we, the one we went to, wasn't it in February? Was it in February? We'll have to go back and yeah. check. But I think you're right. I think it was earlier in the year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that would be fun to go to again. I, I really enjoyed it. Because to me, that's what a comic book convention should be. That was, was fun when we went to that yeah. one. Yeah. Because it was all about the comics and the artists and not there about movies very and TV movie and video presence. games. Yeah. And, and while I enjoy all those other things, I don't think they all need to be under the same roof. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like, my as well just have a movie convention of some kind. I'm surprised that the movie industry hasn't done that yet. I know. What, that would be a smart move. But because I guess you got all these other studios. Because they don't have well, to Let's put, do our own thing. They don't have to put out any money. And they can just send people to Comic-Con. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does make sense. Um... Well, they always have CES and NAB. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so. We kind of went off on a tangent there. <laughs> we always <laughs> but do. But we always do that. We always do. Um, I always feel like there's a better flow when we start the show with a conversation rather than just jumping right into any specific topics that we might have to bring. You know? Yeah. I think it's, it's I mean, better. It's like in our podcast. We talk about what we want. Um, speaking of, you went on a trip and I didn't even know. Yeah, it was. But it was short. It was, right? it was, I was there for two full days. It wasn't for anything Was good. it leisure? No, 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 no. I hung out, I got to go hang out with my mom for a day. Uh. How long is that drive? Uh, 11 and a half hours, 12 Yikes. hours. Yeah. Train ride though? Uh, train ride is longer. It's longer, yeah. Uh, it's, well, it's more like 12 to 13, but the train ride is over. If you take the train, it's overnight. It's from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Oh, so you just wake so, up there. So you get on the train, you get to see some scenery leaving. I would get on in Fullerton because it's easier than right. going to LA. So you get on in Fullerton, you, you take off, and then you know, you're know you up till whenever, and then you go to sleep. When you wake up the next morning, you wake up to some beautiful scenery in New Mexico, and then I wanna get do off that. the train. I want to ride a fucking train. Let's do it. Let's do it. Winter is the best time. Is it really? Yeah. It's the best scenery. Uh, winter, like... Done in December. Uh, okay, December, January. Because December, we, I might actually be going to Seattle. Ooh, really? For what? Podcast convention. Oh. Hank Green, uh, from the guys, the guy who made VidCon. Mm-hmm. Or one of the guys who made VidCon, he's trying to start this podcast convention mm-hmm. in the same vein as VidCon. That's cool. Um, and Seattle seems to be the first spot. So, because he really likes it there. If I'm gonna go to Seattle for anything, it's gonna be to, pa- to go to PAX. Don't they have one in, around that time? Uh, ooh. When do they have theirs? Like Jan- I, don't I think know. it's earlier I think in the it's year. March. Yeah. I think theirs is March. But, but anyways, yeah, I'm thinking about going to that. Um, I think it's, what, only two or three days? Mm-hmm. And um, it sounded interesting. But I'd love to go. Yeah, it'd be fun. I, I want to go back in. I haven't been out there in the winter in eight or nine years at this point. I'd love to go back and be out there during that time because that's it's amazing it, the weather is fucking amazing there and the scenery is beautiful cool. but yeah it was just a quick trip my grandfather was going out there to go visit somebody and he insisted on driving and not taking a plane and i was like all right well i'll ride with you so you don't have to make the drive sitting by yourself because that's shitty to do so went and then my mom lives out there so 
she stayed. He stayed with his brother, and then she came and picked me up and hung out with my mom for a couple of Did days. Did you see Ben? No, he's actually not. That he's in New Mexico, but he's in Albuquerque right now, oh, which is about two and a half dick. hours away. So I went in his room and took a picture with his <laughs> Lindsay Lohan stand up and sent it to him. He's like, "Wait, what are you doing there? What's going on? What are you leaving?" <laughs> it was pretty funny. I told him I was going to put my nuts on his drum kit. It was pretty good. That's funny. But yeah. So I got to hang out with my mom for a couple days. That was nice. Uh, and then got back in the car on Thursday and got home Thursday night. Cool. I wish it was for better circumstances, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, okay. So. Talk about that later if you want. Yeah. Um, cool. Well. I mean, it's been weeks since you've been on the show, so it's yeah. good to have you back here. Yeah, it's... I feel like you got so much to say too. Um, no, I, I think I, I covered the Ready Player One stuff, and you were able to yeah. salvage that and put that up. I'm glad I was able to salvage yeah. that. Um, Just barely. I I saw it yesterday. I'm gonna talk about that. Can um, we review it. Yeah, we can go do it right now if you want yeah, to. Why not? Okay. All right. So you saw it. Yes. Um, I refuse to see that movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, what's your opinion? Okay, so Bryce saw it too, but he'll be back hopefully, and then you guys can we'll be go back more next week and we'll, deeper into it. Yeah, we'll do we'll do more of a back and forth, like more of a chat about it. This is just gonna be my straight up straight up review. opinions of it. Okay, it was fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> so that's it. No. It, it was okay. Um, like there was the acting, the aesthetics. So the uh, the acting, the kids filmmaking. Of the it. kids were awesome. Okay, the that's ki- good the, to hear. The kids were awesome. I was curious about how they would do that. Um, and like I was so, and the the actor that played Pennywise, with Bill Sars, was was good. He played the character exactly how they wanted him to play it. I just didn't like the characterization or the portrayal of the character. Um, for me, so this is. I'm not going to get into too many spoiler things unless I feel necessary. But I will make sure to let you know. If I'm going to, if you've already, it's it's it. It's a book. It was a miniseries that came out 27 years ago. That was the other. That was the one of the. That long ago. Yeah, 1990. It was really cool thing. So like in in the context of the book and the movie, Pennywise comes around every 27 years to feast on children. That's in the context of the story. Right. So they intentionally put this movie out 27 years after the last one had come out. So it's really yeah yeah it's pretty dope right from when they were children or from, from when they were adults no so they put this movie out twenty seven years from when the miniseries debuted okay so it was twenty seven years later just as in the context of the story Pennywise comes around every twenty seven years so I thought so that these was, are new children these aren't the yeah same ones from the book right no 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 this, they they have some same character names and all that like all the characters are the same but they changed they time shifted so it takes place in nineteen eighty nine now. Okay. Uh, which I thought was really, really cool. Oh, I thought cool. they were actually doing something chronologically. Like, no, 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 okay. no, no, no. It's, that would have been pretty cool. That would have been, but I like the actual release. The actual release of the miniseries was in 1990, and then the gotcha. release right. of the movie okay. is 2017, It's just coincidence, okay. Really cool. Um, so the the aesthetics of like the time period, I liked a lot. Um, there's a lot of little subtle things, and they aren't so subtle. It's like movie marquees and stuff like that, so you know it's like the summer of 1989 and all that. And it, it that stuff is really well done. The kids were good. I just didn't like the the characterization of Pennywise. To me, he came off as too hokey. And then when it was time for him to be menacing, I didn't buy it as much. Um, there are some really cool like skin crawly moments in the movie. Um, that I don't, I don't want to spoil. There's a, right. a scene in the library in a library that's fucking amazing, and then there's a scene in the garage with a slideshow thing that you see some of that. You in, see that in the, the trailer, trailer, yeah. Some of it in the trailer, um, but that that's actually really well done. But not because of the way the scene was played out, but it was because of one particular actor, uh, the girl, in in the movie. Um, she was fantastic, but so. Every time something's happening, it's just it's f- just fucking noise. And I can understand like if they wanted to portray it as like, oh, it's very chaotic and you know. But it's just like every time there's more than one kid together and something's happening, it's just screaming and yelling at the top of their lungs, and it's just noise, 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 noise. And it's like that's not that's not scary. It's it's annoying. If I punched you really hard one time, it would hurt for a long time. 
But if I just sat there and went like this for two and a half hours, that's annoying. You'd be fucking annoyed, right? That's how I feel about this movie. <laughs> Like what an analogy, and it's not it's not bad, and that's not saying I didn't enjoy myself, right? Because because I did, and I enjoyed the movie, and the movie is fine, but I'm seeing like it's so good, oh man, it's great. I'm like, no, it it's fine. Um, one of the other things I really didn't it wasn't like, a terrible experience. No, not at all, not okay. at all. Um, I know it's it's gonna sound that way with the way I'm talking about it because I have a lot of nits to pick about the movie. Um, one of them is like the movement of Pennywise. He does that fast, fucking herky jerky, speedy bullshit. Oh, like that's more current. Scare- that's fucking everywhere, and it's not scary. It's obnoxious. It's not scary. Um, there's one scene in particular where he's really scary, and it's him. It's him retreating essentially, and he very slowly creeps down some stairs and very slowly creeps back into this well, and that's scary. But and that's the only time where they use deliberate movement with him. And I was really disappointed by that. And it's not even him on the attack. It's him retreating from something. Hmm. Um, I re- yeah, because the first movie, like he moved normally, slow- right? Yes. It was it almost was like, almost like a Michael Myers slow... Like, because like that's I'm scary. For you, yeah. And like, I'm going to get you. And that's yeah. the scary thing. It's not... It's anticipation because you know he's going to catch up. Yeah, again, yeah. that that punch analogy. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I punched you once really hard or just flicked you a bunch okay. of times. You know, it's like, I didn't like it. Um, and I didn't, like I said, the characterization of Pennywise, I felt like came off as too hokey at points. And then when it was time for shit to be scary and menacing, I didn't buy it as much because he was too hokey. There's a borderline. And again, it's not the actor. I'm sure the, the actor did it exactly how they wanted him to do it. Because if not, they would have done more takes or they would have cut some stuff or edited around it or whatever. So I'm sure he did exactly what they asked him to do and he did it very well. I just didn't like it as much as I liked the original. And I I wanted to go into this and not have my typical fuck remakes um, stance. Can I hope for the best? Yeah, and I went in there with, you know, because I I remember hearing about this movie a few years ago when they started making it. I was like, okay, this... This guy's saying all the right things. Like, these people are saying all the right things for me. So, I'm going to go into it as, like, maybe an update to a classic rather than a remake, you know? Uh, right. And for as far as that goes, they definitely do, did do some updates. Uh, and some things are better for it and some things are worse for it. Like, I, I've been using this word and it's hard to describe it this way and... It just doesn't have the same charm. I know that's not the proper word, probably, but it doesn't have the same charm as the original. Like, it's not... I won't even say gritty. It's just... It's not real enough, if that makes real sense. Enough. Like, I, I guess gritty would be the word to use, but everybody uses that word for everything to where I don't feel like it means anything anymore. Um, believable? Tangible? Yeah, believable. Like, it feels grounded. Like, the characters feel real. Right. But it just aesthetically it feels too bright and too pretty and too clean looking and too technically proficient as far as the filmmaking goes so it just it looks like a modern horror movie and i don't like the way modern horror movies look because they're not scary to me because part of the scariness of those older movies are the aesthetics and practical this, use of effects. Yeah, and I won't even I won't even say practical versus CG. It's just the aesthetics in general. It's the type of filmmaking and the way they shot it. Like this was masterfully masterfully shot. Like it's gorgeously shot and it looks amazing. But like that doesn't. They just work. didn't depict the time period. For it doesn't. It? it doesn't work in the context of a horror movie. Like you okay. can't. You don't want things to be perfect looking and have a nice sweeping I see, shot. I see, I, and, okay, I see what you're saying. You know. Okay. You want you want some some rough edges and f- filmmaking wise there was zero rough edges in this movie everything was just too clean and crisp and smooth um but i love the kids i thought they were great i liked the story like the way they were telling the story um it was gorier like uh, which all right fine i guess if people are so desensitized that you got to make it gorier and bloodier and weirder mm-hmm. but like at the same time if you go back and watch that originally it was the assumption of the shit that was happening that was so scary not actually seeing it done uh and that's my main problem with horror movies in general now is it's not there's no assumption it's all yeah check it out we chopped their fucking head off with a rusty knife cool huh they're like yeah it's not scary that's just gory but 
the the leaving it to your imagination is what scares you um but all in all like i enjoyed it i had a good time and it was it's it's fine like it's it it sounds like i'm demeaning it when i say it's fine but it's fine it's fine for what it is it's enjoyable yeah for for the move for yeah her, yeah definitely for definitely. it being a remake i mean it could have been far worse yeah and i just i walked out and i went well, in with an open mind you know enjoying the story the original story and enjoying what I'd heard the filmmakers say about the movie and how they were going to go out go at it, so like I went in pretty clear clear minded. I didn't want I didn't want to go in with a predisposed hate for it, and I didn't. So when I walked out, uh, my wife goes, "What do you think?" I go, "It was fine," and she goes, "Yeah," and I go, "Yeah, it was fine. There was nothing like, terrible about it. I'd have some nits to pick, but it was fine." And I said, you know, bottom line, and I say this a lot with things like this, but bottom line, sometimes things just don't need to be remade um, because they're not necessarily better for it. Uh, and I, I definitely feel this way about it. I don't think it's better for being remade. Uh, I, I still think the original is far scarier and far creepier. Um, but that being said, I enjoyed it and, uh, I don't feel like it was a waste of money or anything like that. I'm not going to sit here and go, it's fucking terrible. I'm not going to be the exact opposite of what everybody else is saying just for the sake of it. But, uh, I definitely feel like it did not need to be remade. I've actually heard a lot of positive. Yeah, me too. And I've been some hearing, negative. I've been hearing nothing, but I it's feel so like... great. Oh, it's so good. I'm like, you're being hyperbolic because you want to be a part of a conversation. Like, give me your actual opinion, not your 140 character. OMG, guys, it's so good. Everybody go see it. Like, that's giving me <laughs> nothing. That's giving me nothing. Yeah. Like, don't tell me to go see something and not tell me why you go. Why right. I should go see it. I say go see it because it's not as scary as the original. You'll be fine. I don't know, man. There's that one... four minute preview I saw, fuck that voice, man. <sighs> There's one sequence in the movie. There's one scene that's probably about a minute and a half to two minutes long that you would die. You would absolutely die. <laughs> but other than that... I want to know what it is. I'll tell you later. Okay. I, I mean, I don't want to... Spoil it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 it's tracking to make $110 million this weekend, so people have obviously seen it, but... You know I'm not a huge fan of throwing out um, spoilers and things like yeah. that right away. But bottom line, it was it was enjoyable. I just felt like it was unnecessary. And I guess if that's me damning the movie, then to, and you want to take it that way, then that's fine. But I, I enjoyed it. I just have a lot of nits to pick because this is a property that I really, yeah, you really, really, like. really like and care about. I will say, they didn't fuck it up. Which, well, that's good. Which is really good because that's <laughs> happened a lot lately, where they've taken something and Some just remakes, in name yeah. and then fucked it all. They did not do that. Like, okay, I can tell that they went in with the purest of intentions and tried their hardest to make a really fucking good movie. Real, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd see it still. So. You should. I don't know if I can. You should. There's a couple, like I said, that garage scene will fucking murder you and then there's another scene in like an attic kind of thing that'll kill you too i hate attics it's not really an attic it's just a room up an upstairs room but the it's the stuff inside the room that Is would it make weird you that shit. i'm okay with basement stuff i uh, see i'm i don't know i don't like basements yeah or cellars i'm not a fan at all yeah but yeah i don't know i definitely won't see it but come back next week we'll have more <laughs> yeah we'll have a more in-depth conversation with bryce yeah and myself and then we'll have how about next week we'll just do spoilers yeah definitely yeah so come that. back next week for a spoiler version right um cool cool man well i mean i'm glad you well, it seems like at least you liked it for what it is yeah yeah so, definitely like i said they didn't cool. ruin anything i'm not and i'm never i'm never the guy that sits here and goes oh they ruined my childhood because that i think that's stupid to say about something right because them making it did not make the thing you love disappear. That thing you love is still there. Yeah, you can Just go, go back, back and watch that, you know? So I'm never one that goes that far anyway, but I will straight up say, oh, this was terrible, and it does a disservice to this name or franchise or other things. But this didn't do that. This, The people who made this movie had the best intentions, and you can tell that, like, right out of the gate. That's good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Um, well, I went to go see a movie. Ooh, what'd so you I see? got a movie review too. Okay. I saw like I saw two movies. 
Um, I'm hoping we could get Ryan on the, sh- on the line um, for the next movie that I'll talk about. But for now, I'm going to talk about a movie with Tom Hanks. Okay. Um, well, of course, they put his name on it because he's the big name of it. But it's actually a documentary. It's not a movie. It's, well, technically, yes and no. It's a documentary about typewriters. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, it's called California Typewriters. Mm-hmm. Or Typewriter, I should say. And uh, it's about the shop in Oakland, in the Bay Area, where it's like pretty much the only standing typewriter repair shop. Okay. And it talks about how, or it explains how uh, the guy started working there and how he owns the shop. He's like, now is like, he takes typewriters and fixes them for people who still use typewriters. And the reason Tom Hanks is in this movie, they're in this documentary is because he's actually an avid typewriter person. Oh, okay. He loves his typewriters and they see so him at his house with all his typewriters. He's with typewriters the way Norman Reedus is with cameras. You know about it. About yeah, yeah. Reedus, right? I was yeah. Obs- obsessed with cameras. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of the way how Tom Hanks is with, uh, but I guess with typewriters, um, he loves them. He talks about his favorite ones. He talks about the brands. There's a million different brands that like. There's like a ton of different brands. I mean, obviously because this yeah. was like the first, uh, like computer esque type of thing. We need to have Amber on here so she can tell her Norman Reedus story. About, oh, she has a story about, about cameras. About a camera. Yeah, she went to a con a few years ago. That'd be interesting but yeah, to hear. It's pretty cool. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, no, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, so they talk about all these, or he talks about his favorite typewriter and like how each of them have their own feel, the way they touch, the way the keys and the yeah. way the grooves are. He's like, one of those weirdos. <laughs> oh yeah. Woo! And apparently there are a lot of weirdos <laughs> like that. And I'm saying weirdos. I mean that in the nicest in way the possible. In the nicest way possible. Yeah. I'm a weirdo for a lot of different things yes. too. Yeah. Same here. Um, and honestly, like I went into this movie like, just seeing it because, well, Tom Hanks is in it, and I got nothing else to do. And there's traffic. For and there's the next traffic for the next. Minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> fuck it. Let's let's see what this is all about. And I am so glad I saw this. And I highly encourage. I'm like, it has a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? And you think like, oh, it probably only has like a few reviews. It uh-huh. has like, quite a few reviews. You know, like one or two reviews, and it has a hundred percent. But right. no, that's um, cool. This documentary is good because it gives in, it gets into the the culture. Of the people who live by typewriters, right? You know, and so it's not all hipsters that no, 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 no. It's even like a like older older generation of people okay, who just cool. love typewriters and will will just won't use anything else. That's awesome because, uh, oh, what's his name is in it too? Um, the musician John Mayer is that his name? Okay, yeah, John yeah. Mayer. He's in it too because like he's a few years back recently got into the whole typewriter deal because. He, his story was he went to the his uh, music what's the music museum what is it called oh shit I don't know the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is it well yeah there's like that, the whole museum but... they have like a okay. whole museum of yeah. it right so he was walking around there and he's noticing like he's seeing like all these famous musicians like Jimi Hendrix or whatever you know and all their papers and written mm-hmm. you know um, how they write their song like you can know, go into that museum and look at their process yeah you know but when and he started thinking, you know, like when, you know, other musicians, current musicians get their stuff there, you know, what are they going to have? Hard drives, with you know, a cell phone, with a cell phone, Google, you know, or things like Google that. Like, keep open. Yeah. So he decided to himself that he was going to get a typewriter and he's been using a typewriter ever since to write his songs. That's cool. Because you know, if you make a mistake, well, fuck it. Just keep going. It's still there. It's still there. You're going to see the mistakes I made. You're going to see it, the mistakes people... And it's something tangible. It's something exactly, there. That's exactly what yeah. I was getting to. He's like, this yeah. is something tangible. You can't delete this. Yeah. This is here forever. That's Just cool. keep it away from fire. Yeah. Uh, which that's I thought was cool. funny. I want to see that now. Um, and, dude, it's like, it makes me actually want a typewriter. Because it makes sense. And, like, like you just pour your heart out uh-huh. you know it's like you just get there start typing you know if you make a mistake just keep going you know but when you're on a computer you make a mistake you know you have all this passion like, oh wait a minute you know you and know there start, it goes. go back and, there, and then, then it's gone and exactly what he says like you just stop yourself from pouring your heart out and you yeah. get distracted and do other things yeah you know um and the way he talks about it was just so poetic and um not just john mayer or tom hanks because yeah. Also, the guy who runs the shop, he talks about this too. You know, I'm just naming their names because they're the bigger names in this. Obviously. Um, but the guy who runs the shop too is like, like, like I've been working on these since I was a kid. Like these typewriters tell a story. Yeah. You know, they, they tell, you can see, like, it's all machine. There's nothing, you don't plug this in. You know, right. it like, you know, going through it, there's people's DNA on this. You know, it actually tells a story. Yeah. 
Um, they also get into another guy who I've actually seen his articles back way back when because mm-hmm. uh, he's been in uh, like Wired and The Verge. Uh, what he does is he takes old typewriters and tears them apart and makes art from it. Oh, cool. Um, so he knows obviously a lot about typewriters too and what he does is like he basically tears the thing apart and makes things like he made like this full on deer out of typewriters parts. Right. It's insane. That's pretty cool. And like one of his uh, he talks about the other stuff he made like like you know how long those key things are yeah. like the I don't know what they're the called. Arms yeah, the, the arms when the, they hit. The letters on it. Yeah. Like he took a bunch of those and made a bird out of it with its wings That's created awesome. by that. It's so interesting. It's so cool. And um, him he's friends with the guy who owns the shop because uh, he's basically the only other guy he knows that has typewriters or has parts that he does that the guy at the shop doesn't have. Right. You know that so they tr- go back and forth and trade parts if they need parts. That's pretty um, cool, man. It gets into the history of it. There's this one guy who like is the probably the obsessed one like Norman Reedus probably might right. uh, be where um, he wants like his dream is to have the very first typewriter. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's um, cool. He goes to the museum and like he's full on like sexually aroused it seems heavy by breathing this, yes, on it, he's like yeah. oh my god um and uh he's like can I press the button <laughs> he's, he's like he's Canadian German he's like can I press the button he has like this thick accent so then he starts typing on it and then he has shows his story on how he's trying to find this this uh original typewriter finds someone who has like 12 of them but the guy doesn't want to sell any of them. Uh, so that kind of sucks for him that's a bummer um but yeah, like it gets really deep into like the history of it, and uh, you really kind of appreciate. Oh, there's this one person, uh, this woman uh, in San Francisco who writes poetry. She has her own typewriter, and she basically goes, "What is that one place called? The Embargo? Embarcadero. Called? Embarcadero. Yeah, yeah. She's there all the time, always typing like poetry for anyone who wants something written. That's cool. So like you just come like she like you just tell her you know something and then she'll just take it and write poetry out of it mistakes and all that's great yeah I love and it. um and it's it's just so fascinating like there's one line that Tom Hanks says in this was that like like I love it when someone I can find someone where I'm, I'm making a movie or something and someone says oh that's a nice typewriter like I like typewriters like. Do you want a typewriter? I got one for you. Yeah. And he sends him a typewriter. That's cool. And then he says, uh, but here's the thing. Like, I gave someone a typewriter once. I go to their place, you know, to visit, and they have the typewriter on their shelf. And he's like, no, get that shit use off your it. shelf. Put use it on your it. desk and use it. Yeah. You know, I gave it to you use it. It's not art. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and, you make art with yeah. it. It's, and yeah. He, yeah, he talks about, like, like I love getting you know you know what i like sending out thank you letters and i do it with my typewriter i don't send you an email anyone can send an email mm-hmm. you know but when you get an actual physical, physical paper thing. you know type that on a typewriter like if you send me like if i work with you and you send me something that you've done on a typewriter or handwritten i'm going to cherish that forever yeah you know it's like that puts in more thought it, than an email you can do in five seconds on your fucking phone yeah you know that's pretty cool um, i want to see that now that sounds yeah, awesome it's it's the one hundred percent is definitely not a lie. It's that good. Very cool. Um, I would have. I actually wouldn't mind seeing this again. Um, it's a good movie or a good documentary. I highly recommend this. See, you see it. Um, like I said, it actually kind of makes me want to get a type typewriter just for it. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, and it's funny. There's there's spots where they have like this kind of open house for their shop, and these kids are there. And uh, there's one kid that's like, "It's so cool. You don't have to plug it in," which I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, this thing doesn't. How do you use it? You don't plug it in or turn it on? No, you just go, man. You just go. Yeah. So, uh, it's it's a very sweet documentary. I love it. Um, I could I could actually see this probably on my top five. Ooh, Maybe. I've only seen two movies this year, so. <laughs> I don't think I'll be have. So, I don't think I'll have a top five this year. I might just have a top one. A top one. Yeah. Well. You need to you need to start seeing some movies. Yeah, I do. Um, you have Amazon Prime, right? Yes. Okay, Big Six should be on that. Okay. Prime. From, I think you have to pay for it now, but I'm sure it'll, it'll okay. not be for pay. Eventually, be part of the Prime streaming. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a sec. We're gonna have to talk about what we're gonna do with that stuff too, because like I watched the 
Netflix original series, the Castlevania thing. Right. And that was four episodes, so that's about that was twenty minute episodes, so it's about the length of a movie. But like, how are we gonna like? Do we count that as a thing? I don't do we even, count Netflix like original? Series. Do we count Netflix original movies as a thing? And like, I saw, I watched all of Glow, and I loved that. Does that? That's count? technically a TV show. Yeah, but like, all right, maybe we need to revise. We'll probably have to revise it. Top five things we saw this year. Maybe yeah. we have to do that. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Um. Because so, when we talk about hold on, when we talk about video games, like that's that's everything that's you. Know, PS4, PS3, or no, not PS3, PS4, PC, DS, Vita, handheld. Even mobile. Mobile. Pokemon I've had Pokemon. mobile games on my top five before. Like, yeah. it's not top five console games, so maybe it should literally be the top five things we've seen this year. Perhaps. Our favorite things we've seen this year. It doesn't necessarily have to be a movie. It could be a season of an ep- of a TV show or... Well, maybe for well, you, I might be more specific. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that specific, with Bryce yeah. to see how he feels about that. If um, he's watching, he's probably not watching right now, but we'll talk um, about it. Let me see. We probably put something in the chat, maybe. maybe. But we'll eventually we'll, we'll talk about that. But yeah, I just wanna, I wanted to discuss that too, just because I yeah I make it out to the movies less and less these days. So, and it's, I don't necessarily need things to fill up a list, but like, Glow was fucking amazing, man. Like I gotta finish that. Then he, we should be recognized as being awesome, for you know. Yeah. And we're not going to do a top five TV shows we've watched this year either. So, like, maybe we should include that stuff. And it might make people's list completely different. You know? Yeah, perhaps. Might um, be a fun way to shake it up. But, yeah. All right. I'm sorry. We no, can move on fine. now. No, I'm, I'm done. I was done with the review. Okay. So, I went to go see the movie The Big Sick. Okay. And uh, we managed to get Ryan on the line because he saw the movie, too. And he's been dying to talk about it, right? Big red, sick, dick red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The big red sick break. Oh man, Ryan, I missed you. I miss yeah, you, buddy. Yeah, boys too. Dude, the movie came out in July. Yeah, man, it's it been came a few out months. in fucking June, technically, in limited release. Because I saw it before I went back to Jer. Like I saw it a few days before I went to Jersey for a two-week break okay. from Los Angeles. Which so like, and when I saw it, I saw it in the most appropriate place to see the big sick in the ArcLight Dome. And and uh, Ray <laughs> Romano did a Q and A afterwards. <laughs> that, that's uh, yeah. That was a pretty good Ray Romano. That was pretty decent. Thank you. Thank you. I've, I've been working on it. I had this unfortunate phase for a few years where I would just go into like a Seinfeld voice. Like this would be by myself, never in front of people, like to entertain myself. And then I started doing Ray Romano too. And then. Uh, then I stopped because I wanted to not hate myself. But That's, it's always a good <laughs> thing to not hate yourself. Yeah. All right, so Ryan, since you're the guest, uh, lay us on it. Lay us lay lay on, on us. us. Man, um, well, once again, it's it, literally it's been almost two full months, <laughs> two full months since I've seen the movie. Yeah, almost three months since I've seen the movie. Um, but it was my number one movie of the year for a while, and I think it's very 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 good um it has a very like the main thing is i I just think the screenplay is just strong as shit um it's a really interesting take on what in some ways isn't like the newest story in the world um but it is it's so different so honest and real uh it's very moving it's funny um you know it's, it's shot pretty well um I, I, the whole cast is just great. Um, yeah. I had like the like really the only criticism I remember having of the movie, and it was like the most minor, doesn't matter criticism. Um, for the one thing, and this is like so I can't stress to you how small of a thing this is. Um, but I do kind of wish that they didn't do the thing where it's like, okay, he's a, he's a comedian, which is cool. But where they, I felt like they had, like, for the kind of movie it was, I, I thought it went, like, just a little, and this is the smallest criticism. Uh, I, I think it went, like, a little heavy on, like, the cameos and, like, oh, here's his group of really funny stand-up friends. Um, but, like, outside of that, like, and, and that's, like, a stretch, I, I thought it was excellent. I think it's the kind of movie you could watch with your parents, watch, well, not with your kids, unless you're a sick fuck. But, um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought it was really sweet, and I think it 
and it, like it did a really good job of on doing an authentic like showing the beginning of a relationship on screen like it did a very good job with that as well as all the more unique aspects to the story and uh yeah I was gonna go into a Ray Romano voice again, but I'm, I'm, I just woke up and I'm way too tired for that shit. Why are you just waking up? It's because I had I had to go to work today. I had to be there at five thirty. Oh, uh, okay. And then I got sent back, and then I thought I had to poop, and the poop wasn't happening, so I called Rick. And then eventually, like probably like three hours ago, I actually fell back asleep. All so. right. Yeah, dude. Uh, you've been telling me to watch this, or all of us to watch this movie. Um, yeah, and you don't fucking listen. Yeah, we and I wish I did because this movie is fucking awesome, and pretty much everything what what Ryan just said. Yeah, it's like a very, it's not an original uh, like, well, it's it's obviously an original script, but what I'm saying is like, it has like this organic way how they started the relationship, how they get into like, uh, uh, you know, the relationship and what the big sick is actually all about, which mm-hmm. I had no idea. I mean. With the title The Big Sick, I just thought it was like this romantic comedy type of deal. That's why I kind of held off on it. Yeah, but don't don't lie. You love romantic comedy. But no, yeah, I do. Dude. I do. I do. I do. It's true. I, just don't, but, I don't get why you don't trust my opinion enough these days when I'm like, Rick, you gotta see this one. Yeah, he's not, he's not Dan Herman. He doesn't love everything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> not everything's the greatest. Fuck you, Dan Herman. <laughs> my number one one of my number one top five number one movies of all time 2004 um, Dan Herman but yeah so like going into this movie not really knowing what it's about like, right it, I didn't know it was about someone actually getting sick mm-hmm. so when that happened that totally just threw spoiler, a fucking spoiler you fuck oh my god spoiler so that kind of threw a full like curveball and like whoa what the hell am I watching yeah. now and then it's just like the relationship between now not just through the guy and the girl's character but also with the boyfriend's relationship with the parents of his girlfriend because Mm -hmm. you know his girlfriend is sick and in a coma so now it's his you know relationship with her parents right and And before like he meets his parents before she knows that he does and well, yeah, it's, I, I don't want to get too spoiler, but, yeah. But, but, yeah, it's it's a very unique movie, and I love this movie a lot. Yeah, and everything's just about so it. real about it. Like, really, like, I mean, I guess Ryan kind of said it. Like, everything's real about this relationship. One of, like, I don't even know if I want to say this, but there's, like, one scene where they're in the relationship and, like, the girlfriend's just freaking out and she wants to get out of the house. Yeah. You know? And that's probably like the scene that's, well, one of the scenes that stick with me throughout the entire movie and I don't want to ruin it. Right. Yeah. You know? I, I like, think that's the funniest was, scene of the movie. It is. It totally is. And it was just so original and unique. Mm-hmm. And I guess the one thing that makes this movie really stand out within the genre and why I think it'll be like one of those classics that you point to such as like an Annie Hall or, um, or, uh, what's the movie that Rob Reiner directed with uh, Billy Crystal? Um, wow, I am drunk. But I'll have what she's having. Harry Met Sally. Oh, when Harry Met Sally. There we go. That's what I So I, I think it's going to be recalled like one of those. Because oh, the I, thing I that makes it so special, too, is the perspective's really unique because it's so honest with, um, with Camille's character's um, family life and heritage and background. And it has, like, a really interesting take on like race and ethnicity and all that and it really yeah. makes the movie fresh um yeah there i feel like there's one other like really specific thing i thought of that i forgot I, so i'm just yeah i know it's kind of uh uh bad thing to say especially racist. in front of someone in front of a film student is I didn't really enjoy any hall that much. I thought it was all right. Mm-hmm. That's because you're a, a child and clearly not <laughs> are mature. You, you damn Philistine. <laughs> uh, but going off of what he said, I can totally... Okay. Um, going off of what he said there, I can totally see that yeah. as uh, a classic to go back to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I love this movie so much and- that... Spoilers. Like I would put. Um, it's going to be on my top five. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, isn't it so? Amazon was a distributor, and I think it's actually available and Lionsgate. on Amazon now. Lionsgate, I think yeah, it's, part of it too. Uh, I think it's yeah. on available for sale. But for not sale, but not streaming, streaming yeah. yet. Yeah. But it'll be streaming yeah. soon enough. But it's well yeah. worth the sale money. Oh, well worth the thir- I think um, it's thirteen bucks right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well it's. But yeah, it's really really funny moving and uh, yeah, I'm trying to yeah, it's. Now this is a uh, 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 technically a true story between him and his real wife. Yeah, who wrote the screenplay yeah. with? And they him. wrote yeah they wrote the script Emily together. Emily Gordon. Yeah. And um, and, and I, I think Michael Showalter did a like he also directed like a. I think it was only like a year or two ago. Um, hello, my name is Doris, or my name is Doris. I don't know yes. if there's a hello in there, which I thought was okay, but like I that movie, that. I I didn't think had much going on that was too interesting visually or directorially. Whereas this one, it felt like it. It's not like the most stylish movie or anything, nor should it be. But like it, it felt like it had a more confident. Like okay. yeah, he. It felt like the director was more confident right. in this one too, and just like it made the movie stronger for it yeah um the cast is incredible uh, um holly hunter and ray romano uh i thought did very fucking holly good. hunter huh wow yeah, yeah. They there's did. uh she's getting some oscar buzz for it really really yeah I but I, I have a feeling i think because of when this I, I think i was talking to rick about this the other day but i think ultimately what's gonna when it comes to like not that awards matter that much or at all but i think because of since the big sick was released so early in the year i think that's going to be really the only thing keeping it from getting like like i could easily see it getting a screenplay nomination and one or two like acting type things but um i think since it was released so early there's a chance it'll get overlooked in a lot of places and i since it's and because like because like amazon had a bigger part in the theatrical distribution of it than uh um, oh, it its previous movies mm, okay Lionsgate had some sort of rights but amazon i had believe more... has the domestic gotcha. like uh. theatrical like I, I believe it's amazon's first attempt at just self-distributing okay. into the theaters okay and uh because of that it could end up being harder for it to you know market itself as the worst thing but I don't know I, I, people are loving it and I think people are going to keep talking about it so hopefully I like, hope be, so. it would just be cool to see like a movie like this get some sort of recognition and I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility by any means yeah I definitely think whether you know wins or not I definitely think it deserves that script mm-hmm. yeah. nomination for and, sure and, and really the true prize is I think compared to most of the movies including like the one movie I've seen this year that I've liked more than it um, I think this is going to be one that sticks around like people are going to be talking about this one for a long time because it's it works on a broad enough scale while still being specific and like I yeah I, I think this is it's going to be one of those movies that sticks with everyone <sighs> yeah yeah, I definitely need to see it. I've been hearing nothing but good things about it and just haven't had a chance to get out and see it. And now that it's digital and all that shit, I might actually just watch it that way. Yeah, you should get out and see it and see Get Out as well if you haven't. Because Get Out is also out? very good mm-hmm. and a movie that I think is going to be talked about for a long time. That was this year? Yeah. Yeah, it's very big. It came out in like January oh, or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, which is crazy. And it's still... I think it's the highest, it might be the highest grossing R-rated horror movie ever until it has been out for a few more weeks, but it's Mm -hmm. pretty crazy when you think about it, because that, talk about original movies. Right. Jesus. So yeah, I mean, overall, we love this movie, and we highly recommend people to go see it, whether if you get it in theaters or buy it on Amazon, that would, yeah, I definitely And I don't know about you, Rick, like, I got emotional before she even got sick just because of how like something about how how, how real did... the relationship was yeah like i found myself like tearing up like that early in the movie yeah yeah the way they developed the relationship between the two characters is just fucking so organic mm-hmm. and uh it's it was good i mean even i mean i don't know if i got that early on teary out i got more teary 
halfway through it. Oh, Basically, coward. what Rick's saying is he's fucking stone cold and you're a pussy, is what yeah, he's saying. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So, Rick, no. when are we reviewing it? Oh, the, <laughs> next week. Uh, what are you doing I was, next I was joking, week? I, was making I know, fun. but what are you doing next week? I, I gave my opinions earlier, but hopefully Bryce will be back next week and we can have more of a conversation about it. So you you saw you saw it? Yeah, I did see it. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, next week. Um, shit. Um, <laughs> well, we can Rick talk about knows, it off the air. Yeah. Yeah, Rick knows what's going on next, next oh, week. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, but it's not necessarily a no, but it's also. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can't talk about that on air. No, gotcha. no, we can. We can talk. We'll talk about that about a little later. bit, dude. But yeah, because yeah. I know okay. you might be busy, so um, yeah, put it simple. Uh, all right, cool. So yeah, that's 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 our review of the big sick. Is oh, oh my god, go fucking watch this movie right now. Nice. Yeah, it'll tap your heart. Well, thanks for joining us as always, Ryan. Do you have any other things you would like to say to uh, the big red one himself before we let you go, or anyone listening? But um, mostly the big red red one here. Today. You could watch the backseat movie made by some cool, smart, hot dude who was hilarious on this podcast right now. You could watch I it mean, on Amazon for free if you're a Prime member. He's pretty hot. I'm just saying. Yeah, get he's your member hot. primed. <laughs> or the backseat. Yeah. Uh, I think we should have it there. Uh, hey, Ryan, I think I'm actually going to have my wife sit down and watch that with me tonight. Because I still have, yeah, I still right, have not um, seen the final cut. But, fuck, that's right. Right. But don't yeah. expect me to officiate your divorce. <laughs> and on that note, thanks again, Ryan. Everybody's golf. Everybody's yeah. golf. I have it. You have it. Yeah. Bryce has it. Uh, Josh has it. Josh has it. Dan? No. Fuck you, he's Dan. Not, he's not going to get it. He's not going <laughs> to get not? it. Because he hated playing golf with us in Grand Theft Auto because oh, he sucked right. at it. Because he sucked right. at it. He sucked. You suck, Dan. That's why you're well, scared. I suck, too. You're scared. That's all. Um, that's true. I get, I get it now. But yeah, so uh, that game came out oh, two weeks ago, I think. And I played a bunch of it before I took this last minute trip with my grandfather. And then uh, as soon as I came home, I didn't play any Thursday night because Thursday was... Oh, I got up at 4.50... Right. California time and then got home at about 7 o'clock and because we, we didn't leave right away we didn't leave until about 7 o'clock California time and then uh, got home at about 7 o'clock and then p.m. then ate dinner uh, we're having some plumbing stuff happen I wanted to take a shower so I had to stay awake and wait for that to get finished so I could take a shower took a shower went to bed and was just too exhausted to play anything on Thursday night so Yesterday, though... You want your tea? Hmm? Iced tea. Uh, yeah, please. Um, so yesterday, uh, I played a little bit with Bryce online. I showed him... Because uh, he had played with Josh. But the only thing they did was the create a private room thing. Oh, okay. They didn't do the roam around the course thing like you and I were doing. Um, so That was a lot of fun. So we did that. We roamed around the course and played a couple, played nine holes there. And then he was like, oh, so do you, want to, do you want to do this again? Do you want to start a room? I was like, I'll start a room because I've unlocked more courses than you guys. And then you guys can join my room and see some of these advanced courses. Yeah. So <clears throat> we did that. And uh, uh, that was fun. We played nine holes of that. And then he had to go. And I was like, well, I think I'm just going to stay here and play. So I played till about 1 a.m. last night <laughs> from about 7 o'clock. Because I played about five hours of everybody's golf last night, four or five hours. And, uh, yeah, I, I freaking it's love fun, that game, man. Right? Um, yeah. I wish they would have kept the, the Hot Shots name. I wish they wouldn't have changed it. I understand that Hot Shots Golf is really literally the only name that the only thing it's been called and the only place it's been called that is in the United States. Everywhere else, oh, it's, it's always called been... Everybody's Golf. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the, the, the Japanese characters translate to Everybody's Golf, uh, which is fine. Um, I wish they would have done something like the, the Resident Evil 7 did, because in you know, Japan and everywhere else, Resident Evil is called Biohazard. So I didn't know that either. Yeah, so <laughs> in, in, in Japan, Resident Evil 7 was called Biohazard 7 colon Resident Evil. Here, it was called Resident Evil 7 colon Biohazard. So I wish they would have done something like that with this that way it's just weird calling it everybody's golf it just doesn't translate well here uh, it doesn't but it's the perfect name for it because it literally is it's something anybody golf. can yeah. pick up and play um you know bryce having never played the hot shots series at all 
uh, picked it up and picked it up pretty easily. And he's, he was telling me like, I, I love how simple it is, but I also love how much depth there is and how much you can do and all that. And I was like, damn man, that's, that's the way these games have always been. And he's like, how many games have they come out with? So I gave him like, I was like, well, like, they did, I think they did two five? on PS1. They did two on PS2. They did one on Vita and one on PSP. Oh, and they I've did, and this. they did one, or they did two on PSP and one on Vita and they did one on PS3. But three was out of bounds, right? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, but yeah, man, and Hot Shots Golf Open T was the PSP ones. And then Hot Shots Golf World Invitational was the first one with online, and that was the Vita one. Um, That's, yeah. But yeah, and I, I was like, yeah, man. And he's like, well, how do they change? I was like, they don't really. They just get better. The they mechanics get... are just the same since, as the first Hot Shots. is kind of what I told Bryce, too. And yeah. that's what makes this game so fun and easy to play, but still, with you still need skills. Yes. For it. Well, then he was asking me about like backspin and top spin, and if I ever use them, and I go, "Yep, I use them on every shot." And he goes, "Really?" And I go, "Yeah. If you're hitting into the fairway, I always use top spin because you get some extra roll out of it. And when I, anytime I'm approaching the green, I do my best to use backspin because it'll stop the ball where it hits." Yeah. And he goes, "Oh, all right. I've kind of been doing that." And I was like, "All right." So, yeah. But he was just asking me like little things like that, and uh, and I was telling him, "I was like, have you figured out how to read the green yet? Because it's." It's it's easy to read it, but it's hard to figure out how to adjust for it if yeah. you, you haven't played. I'm starting to get the before. hang of it. Yeah. And I was telling, I was like, even Rick, who has played these games before, still has trouble reading the green and then putting. Mm. But you figure it out pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I, I caught on as soon as uh, I started looking closer. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, the game. I still got a lot more to play. Yeah. Uh, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, since I played with you, I've gotten more handle on the green. Okay. Good. Good. Um. So I can pretty much make the shots that I w wasn't able before. Mm -hmm. uh, just, of course, depending on how much power I put into it. Right. Um, I've been, I think I did some shopping. I got some different balls. Um, uh, but as far as, like, I've been up, like, the more I've been playing, obviously, you know, the more power and all that right. stuff. But I maxed out um, my driver. So it's uh, my one wood is I haven't, I haven't, level yeah. twenty five power now, so I can't get any more power on it. So I go, <laughs> it goes three hundred yards without a power shot now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I love the game. I love the character. Like as much as I kind of don't like to do it, but at the same time I do like to do it, especially when it comes to this golf game. Mm -hmm. I loved creating like, my character. It came out so good, and dude. I think it, it came, came out, out right. really, really. I think I made myself a little bit thinner, but of course you wouldn't. <laughs> Um, well, if you're Josh, you make yourself way fat. Yeah. <laughs> but his uh, came out really good too. His, good his too. Dan is hilarious. His Dan's perfect. It's so funny. His Dan is perfect. Um, I still need to do some tweaking on mine. I feel it looks enough like me, but I, I still want to do some tweaking on it. Yeah, I, I feel like I need to tweak a bit myself. I don't know, dude. I think you need. I think it's perfect. Well, I, don't I think you need to leave it. Uh, I'll put pictures here. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, oh god, I love this game. This is everything I wanted. Yeah, me it's too. Everything man. I wanted and more. Yeah, we both we both missed out on this on PS3. We never we never picked up. Yeah, Hatchet's I think Golf I played the PS3. demo and that was it. I ended up picking it up way later, like towards the end of the console life, because they were yeah, selling it for like five dollars, yeah. and I was like, well, shit, I can't pass this up. But the online service had already been shut off, so that mm. aspect of the game was already gone. Um, but yeah, man, this is e exactly what I wanted. Um, I know I, for one, will shit on a franchise because, oh, it's just, it's just a little bit tighter. It's just a little bit more polished. It's just, there's nothing groundbreaking. But at the same time, I think some, with some games, especially sports games, uh, that don't, th I'm glad this isn't, that this was never every year a Hot Shots Golf game had come out because if that was the case, then I'd be, I'd probably be over it. Hmm. Um, but the fact that they take their time. And you can, you can feel the work that they put into yeah, it. Yeah, the whole generation yeah, it, system went by. It controls. You, it, it's like, oh, this feels just like Hot Shots Golf used to feel. This is great. But then you realize, oh, wait, this feels way better than those games felt. But so it definitely feels more polished. They give the illusion of this is exactly what I but remember. But it feels the same, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, the courses are great. I'm on a, a desert. Like a, it looks like Arizona. It's got, like... <laughs> cliffs and it's like red red cliffs and sand and stuff and it, it it's really cool looking right now i'm on level i'm on the sixth course 
I'm level five now. I've, oh, level yeah, I'm on the fifth course. I've beat all the first four. So I've unlocked the golf cart, which you get in the second set of courses, and then I unlocked the fishing rod, which you get in the fourth set of courses. Um, uh, for getting 50 birdies in tournament play, I unlocked a character, and they, that character teaches you how to swim. So now when I jump in the water, instead of just like wading in the water, I can actually swim. That's so fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really Do you fish really yet? Excited. Yeah, yeah. I okay, you got the fish. Okay. Fish. Yeah. Really excited about it. It's super fun. It's super basic. It's like you hold X to cast out, and then... When you feel the bite, you hit X, and then you just have to mash X to reel it in. But <laughs> right. but there's a, there's a game aspect to it, because if you just keep mashing, you'll snap the line, uh... and you'll lose the fish. So you have to fill up this power bar, and if it gets to the red, you got to stop mashing it and let it go back down. So it's and, like the whole kind yeah, of like pulling yeah. and letting go. Push and, push and pull, go, push yeah. and pull kind of thing, and you have like 30 seconds to reel this fish in before it gets away. And so you have to manage your kinda button re- yeah kind of reminds me of the 3ds game i played that had to do with fishing mm-hmm. that's just kind of you're just yeah. describing the same thing it's it's it does, super yeah. fun it's a nice detour i have the go-kart i have i don't know when the go-kart racing or the golf cart racing stuff comes into play because i know you can actually race golf carts on tracks so uh i'm excited is it an update maybe, maybe. or maybe it's something that or just have unlocked there's um there's a section of so there's open course where you and I met up in front of the pond right. and we're hanging around, running around. Then there's turf war, which is a daily thing where like you and I can be on a team and we go and w- there's two teams and you go in and who, whichever team scores the best on that hole gets that hole. And then, uh, so you kind of have to defend okay. and take overtake holes. It's pretty cool, but there's a center section that you can't go into yet. And they said that that's coming later. And then there was like some leak out of, uh, not a leak, but a translated article from Japan about all the stuff. There's more courses, more clothes, more game modes, mini games, uh, putting challenges, and all this shit's coming to everybody's golf. And I'm super wow. pumped about it. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, I've, I've been digging it a lot, man. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely gonna play. I'm gonna play Destiny tonight. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but I definitely would want to play. Uh, I'll so, be playing golf tonight. So uh, I'll be streaming tonight if I play golf. Yeah. Um, with you, obviously. Uh, but I think I'm gonna concentrate on Destiny. Destiny today. Because yeah, you haven't you haven't had a chance. I haven't to touched it. Touch it. I haven't fucking touched it. Did you make sure it. it's installed and patched up and ready to go? You better do that. Yeah, it's okay. it's in rest mode. Okay. Right. So, so it does it that. Done it should, that. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I make sure to put it in rest mode because I actually lately I've been turning it off. Fuck, and that reminds me, I forgot to ask you to bring your tools so we can open up my PS4. Oh, and clean it out. Yeah. Um, I think I might have the tools for it. Uh, I don't. Uh, it's yeah, it's a security bit set. I don't actually own a security bit set. I I, just, I used a flathead screwdriver, which kind of stripped my screws, but it's fine. I think uh, I have those. I the, bought this. It was on sale. Like the security this case. bit. Okay. Yeah, like the whole like kind of like I fix it stuff. Yeah, we'll Toolkit. check. We'll check and see if we'll that's see. it. But yeah. It's pretty easy to do. Um, the only sketchy part, and it's not even sketchy. It's just it feels sketchy because you actually unscrew and remove the power supply. To you don't you don't disconnect any ribbons or, or cords. Oh, okay. just but the you, power you unscrew okay. it and you re- you take it out of its cradle. Oh. It's sketchy, but I, I it's not hard. Okay. It's not hard. Um. Yeah, yours is getting noisy. We need to get the dust out yeah. of it. Uh, so yeah, um, Destiny. I'll definitely have. A review of that. I think when I get right. home, I'm going to go and make some hard decisions and part with some things <laughs> and hopefully be able to pick up Destiny because just funds are too tight right now to justify buying another game. And But I really want to play Destiny. Yeah. Um, really want to play Destiny. <laughs> I'm so... Like, I know, like, I mean, they've talked about, like, it being very inclusive. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, if you don't have anyone to play, don't worry. There'll be someone there to play with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is, which will be nice. But, like, it's always fun when you can play with someone that you know. With friends, yes. Um, and uh, 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 one of my uh, Facebook friends ended up getting it. But on Xbox. But on I Xbox, it, yeah. That's a bummer. So that's really sucks. And she has a PS4. I was surprised when she got it on Xbox. So. Well, if she started, if she played it the first one on Xbox, it just makes sense to stay there. I don't know. She you did. know, 
But yeah, yeah. it does make sense to say that. Um, yeah. You know, I almost even considered buying it on PC. But then I didn't for the reason it wouldn't be of worth my it right now. laptop. Yeah. I'd, I'd, yeah. I, need, I would need a gaming rig for that. Yeah. And you wouldn't be able to transfer anything over. And you wouldn't be able to play. There'd it. be transfers? Um, so oh, let's transfers over. Some gear and some stuff like that from your character. Oh. Um, and then you wouldn't be able to play with me, though. Well, yeah, that's true. And to be honest, don't lie. Wasn't the PC, though? Like, I, I thought that was going to have uh, cross-platform no. play. Uh, maybe or... cross pla- cross-platform play, but not cross save not take your game save and bring it over right right right. but but playable like i could be on pc you can be on ps4 oh, yeah yeah that's I think right, they mentioned right. That. i think destiny can do yeah. that um but I'm yeah look into it and to be honest right. come on but to be honest yeah i got a lot the time of you had the most fun was with me obviously yeah because we would spend 20 minutes at the tower and i would just be jumping up and down on your head and we would sit there and laugh like idiots <laughs> and then and then we'd go shoot people, people. <laughs> Oh man, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm excited. I think I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna go make some hard decisions, and hopefully, I'll get enough credit to pick that up. Yeah. Um, but to be fair, the only there's not really that many hard decisions because all the games I play now, I've been getting digitally, which is, except for everybody's golf, I got physically, which I should have just got it digitally. I regret not buying that digitally. Um, yeah, I started to get if I should have got that. But yeah, and the only other physical game I think that I would want to keep. I mean, I, mm, I'm probably not gonna play Uncharted Four again. Yeah, I don't think I probably will either. So I might go. Do, well, gonna, maybe I, I don't know. Do I love that. it too much. I do too, but like, I'm gonna. I think I'm just gonna keep it just for the sake because it's Uncharted. Yeah. And plus, it's also the collector's edition. So. Oh, that's right. You got the collector's edition. Now. Well, you don't have to get rid of any of your collector stuff. Just take the right, the, right. The game. Um. But yeah, I just don't know how much money I would get for the games I have because all the game, most of the games I have are you know two years old at this point because I've been buying everything digitally for the most part like the only other the only other thing I have that was not digital that I won't be getting rid of is Overwatch because every once in a while I still hop in and play that and that game's still good and they're, they're bringing back they're bringing back some events that I want to play this year that I didn't get to play last year because I didn't own it yet um, but yeah I think everything else is fair game in that box at home even uh, like the old, but the old PS3 games aren't going to catch any value anyway, so there'd be it'd be pointless to trade them in. Um, hmm. Like I have I have Skate One, Two, and Three, but that would be pointless to trade in because I'm not going to get any value for it. Skate Three. I might because about three months ago, that re-entered the NPD numbers, like the top ten. Skate Three. Really? Yeah. You want to know why? Because they made it backwards compatible on the Xbox One for Xbox 360, so people uh... ran out and bought it again. Uh, and we're buying it new and not used uh, and like yeah so it was it got it got pretty popular again at one point come on skate <laughs> they're not gonna make another yeah one. i know they won't that was our best chance at them getting another one into production is seeing holy shit we're in the top 10 mpds again maybe we should make another one of these games they won't do it and it's a bummer because man man that game those is so were the good. best skating games i've played I still love Tony Hawk. Well, I mean, yeah, I love my heart. I love the Tony Hawk game. Uh, all the way up to all of them, up to Proving Ground. Uh, the last. They play the first three only. Really? Wow. Or the uh, the what was that? What, there was one there title. Was one, two, three, and four, and then there was Tony Hawk's okay, Underground. Okay, I played four. One and two. Underground was the last one I played. Yeah, yeah. And then so they did two of those. Yeah. Then they did. American Wasteland, which was really fun because at the time I that, wanted to get that, but I ended up not getting it. At the time that game came out, um, the documentary Dogtown and Z Boys had come out, and the movie Lords of Dogtown had come out. So everybody was super into old school skating, like the old yeah. school stuff. And so there was a lot of that in American Wasteland. Uh... And then they did Tony Hawk Project 8, which. <laughs> was really really good um and uh, that was like the first one on ps3 and 360 that was built from the ground up for those consoles because american wasteland was on ps2 and xbox 360 but uh wasn't built for the ground up for that and then tony hawk's proving ground was the last one that they did for 360 and ps3 that was like an actual tony hawk game then they did tony hawk ride which was the peripheral one. And that Tony was Hawk, so stupid. And the sequel to that, Tony Hawk Shred. Um, then they did Tony Hawk HD Remaster, which was some levels from 1 and 2. 
That was that was the one you were disappointed with, right? It was fine, but it just didn't feel right. And then they did Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Five, which was fucking That's the terrible. One. That's the one. Uh, yeah. Oh, so terrible. I remember one of them you really hated. They said all the right things to me there, Rick. Yeah, and they but lied. it was awful. They were they were liars, filthy, filthy liars. Sixty dollars for this fucking game. You gotta be kidding me. I'm glad I rented it on Redbox and didn't pay for it. But I'm not gonna lie. Recently, it was on sale for like twenty bucks on PSN, and I was like, mm, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. I'll just get my disc. Remember. I'll just get my Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One disc or in Pro Skater Two discs, and I'll pop those in the PS3 and play those. Which is what we need. We still need to do that, by the way. Retro gaming. Yeah, we need to bring the PS3 over here and plug it into your capture and stuff. Try to stream that. And well, I'll wait some, today. I really play some Tony. Hunt. Don't have much to do except um, to build the table. We'll build the table and then we'll see today. what's going on after that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, everybody's golf is amazing. Video games are great right now. Um, I've played enough video games this year to have a good list so far, but I'm gonna try and play some more. I still need to get around to playing Resident Evil. Uh, I still need to get around to playing a little bit of Nier because I really like the last game that they came out with. I know this is completely different, but um, yeah, I got to play Destiny. Um, I'm just like every year. I'm intrigued, even though I don't care about World War II. I'm intrigued about the Call of Duty that's coming out this year. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two is coming out this year. God, is that already a second one? Mm-hmm. It's been two years. It was every other year. Yeah. But this one's got a story and everything. Oh. It's going to be sweet. Yeah, the, the Battlefront that came out last time didn't, didn't have, have a story. story. Yeah. yeah, that's why I didn't really care for um, it. And then Gran Turismo Sports coming out in November. The new Assassin's Creed's coming out in November. Thank God for Redbox, man. Seriously. Because, like... Whatever happened to Gamefly? Uh, it's just too expensive, man. It's like, expensive it, now? It's the same. It's 15 to $17 a month for one game. And it's like... One game at a time, and yeah, I could power through a game in a day or two and turn it around and maybe get two in one week, but then there's their supply is so much smaller now because they don't have as many subscribers anymore, so they uh... whittle down their supply, and it's like, oh, but I wanted to play Destiny, but they don't have it, so I'm going to get a game from four years ago that happens to be in my queue because they have a high yeah. stock of that. Fuck that. Um, the, the WWE game that's coming out this year actually looks pretty decent. Uh yeah, there's a lot of games coming out that I need to play still, but barring any kind of out of nowhere shocker, oh my god, this is so fucking good, I already know what my game of the year is going to be. Cause yeah. just, just looking at the lists of games coming out, um, there's, there's, <clears throat> there's an outside chance that something might be able to beat it. But that'll just depend on how much time I put into that game, I guess. But anyway, I don't want to get yeah, too I, crazy. Yeah, I still got. Uh, let's see. As far as upcoming games for me, um, wasn't really interested in the Mario Rabbits one. Uh, I know Bryce got that. He's actually enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Um, Mario Odyssey. Is Mario out Odyssey this year. is that something. Cool. I'm, I actually almost pre-ordered that yesterday. Um, if you do, do it, off. do it through Amazon. If you're I was, because I thought it was a price drop for Prime. But it's members. only up until release date now. Did you? Did, I did. Did, talk, did, they, did you guys yeah. talk about that? No. Oh, shit. We should talk about that real quick. Um, so Amazon, for your Prime member, what they were doing is like they were giving you like a 20% discount if you pre-ordered a game. Yeah. Not, not just up to release. If you bought it, I think it was like the first two the weeks first, of it yeah. being out, you still got 20% off. But they've taken enough like market share of pre-orders from places like Amazon and GameStop and, and Target and Walmart and all that, where they're like, okay, no more 20% after release, only up until release date, yeah. which is kind of a bummer. That sucks. That really kind of sucks. a bummer because I definitely waited until after um, a couple of games had come out. That's why I was them. surprised because I was going to like I was gonna buy Destiny Physical from Amazon when it already came out. I'm like, wait, why isn't it discounted? I was yeah. like... Oh, well, whatever. I'm just going to find it. I was actually like, it was like a whole 25 cents cheaper if I yeah. just bought it in person at Best Buy. So that's why I got it. Yeah. Um, or oh, not for everyone's golf. Everybody's, everybody's golf. golf. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I got it. For, I got everybody's golf for 32 bucks because I pre-ordered it. I knew I was going to want that game because yeah. I knew. That was my, uh, I should have totally pre-ordered yeah. that. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think, I think 
I understand why they did that. I get it. That makes because sense. Because it completely, like, if you're waiting for reviews to come out, and then the reviews are good, and then you get, like, this huge surge of, of games sold through Amazon, the profit margin they're making is completely shrinks. Um, yeah. So I understand, and I get it. And they're top dog now with pre-orders, so they, they can do whatever they want. Um, but yeah, I got to go back to, do I really want this game? And, and people are like, oh, no pre-order games. Don't pre-. It sets a bad message to developers. Like, I don't fucking care about the message I'm sending to developers. I care about that $12 I'm saving on a full-price <laughs> game, you know? But yeah, uh, you know, fucking times is tough, man. Yeah. Funds are tight. So yeah, I'm probably most likely going to pre-order Odyssey. Yeah. Um, just, I don't, just don't know when. It comes out in October, I think, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think you said October. I don't know what day exactly, but it's October. Um, there's that. And now that I found out LA Noir is going to come out, I'm going to Yeah, play that. but that's the remaster. So, like. Yeah, sure. Um, newer games, though, yeah. yeah. Odyssey, and I feel like I'm missing one. Uh, is there another one coming out later this year for PlayStation? Far Cry 5 is coming out, which seems pretty cool. No, I wasn't um, really interested in that one. Maybe there's another. Uh, I mean, the things we're looking forward to, like Detroit, aren't probably going to be until or the earliest next I think year. That's, yeah, that's probably the only other game I could think um, of that I'm looking forward to. But yes, the new that or whatever. Is, well, the Kojima ones that can come out for not, a long not, ass time. That's probably going to be a PS5 game. Don't even yeah. don't even get excited about that. Um, but yeah, I, I guess that uh, Far Cry Five looks pretty cool. Um, nobody's talking about it right now, which is kind of weird. I had a big push. Five? Yeah, I had a big push at one point, and now nobody's really talking about it. Um, I really do think the new Assassin's Creed game looks pretty awesome. Uh, and then, like I said, Gran Turismo Sport, um, which I wish I wish I had friends that were more into racing games, like simulation racing games. I know I can, I know I can twist your guys' arm and get you guys to pick up an arcade racing game, but. It's a lot harder to get you guys to try and get into a simulation game. But Michael, and Michael I, loved racing games. Does he really? Yeah, and I he hasn't played in forever. I totally get that, and I totally understand that. They're not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but man, I just I wish I had more people that I actually knew that I could play these kinds of games with. Uh, the new Need for Speed, I think, looks really cool. That's coming out, too. Like, There's five or six games coming out still that have not come out yet that I want. Uh, not to mention the countless ones that came out earlier this year that I still haven't played that I want. Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely going to hit up the red box and, you know, spend two bucks, play it for a night and crank out as much as I possibly can. And I'm generally not a fan of somebody who reviews games that doesn't quote finish, finish them. But you know, if it's a story based game, like a call of duty, I know I can beat that in one sitting. I know I can beat a battlefield story mode in one sitting. Um, you know, a Need for Speed game is going to be eight to ten hours. That might take me two two rentals to beat, but I'll get through that. But you know, a game like WWE, like the WWE game, that's not necessarily a game that you have to beat to review um, or have a, a valid, in my opinion, a valid opinion on whether it's good or not. You kind of know right away because it's all the same stuff, the same mechanics. Um, but yeah, man, I'm really excited about video games this year, and I think 2017 is shaping up to be one of the best game years in video games, right up there with like 1998 and 2001, and even 2004 was really good. Um, but yeah, it's shaping up to be an awesome year for video games. Like, you got Horizon and Zelda and Resident Evil that all came out within the first three months of the year, and it's like fuck. And then Neo, which is a Sony exclusive game that's like a Dark Souls type of game. But with like uh, samurai, yeah, uh, which is very cool and near and Final Fantasy fifteen people enjoyed, um, Persona five everybody's golf is out, Destiny's out, Mario Rabbit versus or Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Rush I think is what's or yeah. Kingdom Battle is apparently really good if you like strategy games I'm not a huge fan of those but that's apparently good if you like those. Um, Trying to find out what that other game. Splatoon was Two, by all rights, is That's fucking amazing. That's the one. Yeah, I, thought, I forgot it already came out, but I still need to buy that. I want the Splatoon Two Switch with the pink and green controller. That looks. That's what cool. I want. Woo. I wouldn't mind buying the controller Again, separately. Uh, times is tough. Funds are tight. I probably. Won't I had be a lot of fun playing the demo soon, but yeah. Um, but yeah, Mario Odyssey, uh, all that stuff. So it's gonna be a good game, good year for video games, dude. But yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. Splatoon. 
Yeah. Um, Even Mario Kart 8 Remaster, the Deluxe or whatever. I actually bought that digitally because I knew I was going to... That's that, going to be the game. That's like everybody's game. golf. You'll put thousands of hours into that game over the course of the lifespan of that Switch. Yeah, and pretty much already have. Just well, me, I may have actually, my sister has been putting a lot more hours than I have. <laughs> yeah, it's a, Mario Kart is one of those games that they don't have to do much to. They just need to put a new one out and make it drive a little tighter and feel a little better and look a little nicer. And I, 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 great right now. I want them to actually put out a game I want a game like that is called Mario Kart Deluxe, and I want every track that's ever been in any Mario Kart game. All the tracks? Every track ever. That's what I want. Going all the way back to SNES till now, I want every single track they've ever done in a Mario Kart well, game. Well, they have like <clears throat> rebuild or remastered they, versions of the they, track. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They have some old tracks, like some favorites, but like I literally want every single circuit <laughs> i want every circuit from every game in a mario kart game that to me would be the ultimate make it a platform you don't have to come out with a mario kart game every year every couple of years or every console anymore you come out with the mario kart game and it's like hey guys here's six, give us 60 bucks here's every cart that's ever been in a mario kart game yeah. and then in six months we're gonna put a new circuit out it's gonna cost you five dollars like, make it a platform like Rock Band became. Here's all these songs, but here's all these other songs you could buy. We don't need to come out with new games every six months or every 12 months, every 18 months. We'll just give you more content. I and, can see them doing that with this. And now that they're finally embracing online and digitally right. properly, I could see them doing that with a, with a Mar- another. Like, do Mario Kart or wait till it's the 10th Mario Kart game. Do the 10th Mario Kart, mainline Mario Kart game, and have that be... Mario Kart Infinite or whatever you want to fucking <laughs> yeah. call it, you know? And give me all give me all the tracks. Yeah, I could definitely see Nintendo putting some kind of a drop in DLC for yeah. tracks. Um hi Glory5514. Hello. Thanks for watching. Um but yeah, I guess they'll totally see Nintendo. Yeah. yeah, Splatoon was one of them and I think really the only major game will be Detroit. That's gonna whenever be, that comes Hopefully out. that's next year. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, um, but I yeah, just, man, I'm super hyped about video games right now. Yeah, me too, dude. Um, there's just so much. Oh, and Rocket League is coming out for, yeah, the, for Switch, the Switch. And that's going to be cross-platform playable. Uh, only for to PC and uh, Xbox, not to PlayStation. Not for PlayStation? That's a big old boo. Yeah. I didn't know that. PlayStation, you can play with PC players, but not anybody else. Huh. It's understandable. I get it. They're number one right now. They're in the top spot. They don't need to do that shit. Microsoft needs to do that shit. Nintendo, to prove, hey, we're on par with everybody else, needs to do that shit. But Sony doesn't have to. And I can understand that they don't want to. (laughs) Yeah. Just like with the Minecraft thing. Oh, yeah, Minecraft. That's only towards Microsoft, right? Microsoft, Switch, and PC, and mobile. It's weird. Yeah. But here's the reason why Sony doesn't want to do it. And they won't ever outright say this, but this is the reason why. And I don't know if we've talked about this. I think we might have talked about this just a little bit in passing. Probably just a little bit. Um, If you want, if you're on the Switch and you get Minecraft and you say, yes, I want to unite the servers and I want to play online with everybody. It makes you create an Xbox gamer tag. Oh, that's right. No, we talked about that offline. Why would Sony do that? Why would Sony feed any of their 60 million users into Microsoft's ecosystem? It doesn't make any sense for them to do that. Because then all Microsoft can do is turn around and say, we have 60 million new, well, whatever, however many million new users to our service. No, you don't. Those are all PlayStation users that you're forcing to, and same thing with Switch. They're all just Switch users that you're forcing to create an Xbox Live account so they can play on your servers. And I understand how that makes sense to do it that way for security reasons and all that stuff. But all it does is pads Microsoft's numbers and that's all they care about. Yeah. yeah I remember we talked about this offline. Yeah. yeah, I just don't see myself thinking. I, actually, I think I do have a Microsoft account. Really? I think, because that when I got Windows 10, I think. Oh I yeah, that'll. I think that'll, I think that'll work. that'll probably work. 
Windows oh. Live or whatever it's called or yeah yeah. Anyways, so that's I guess that's it. That's it for the show. Yeah. All right. Cool. Feels good to be back. Yeah. Feels good to be back. I had a lot to say. So yeah. it's definitely had. A... I always have a lot. To say. Oh yeah. We always... <laughs> what, what's what's our line again? Uh, we don't have a lot to talk about, but we've got a lot to say. Exactly. So if you like the show, be sure to follow us on YouTube, youtube.com slash user slash some shit we like. Yep. Um, all, I have this. Mm-hmm. All our description, uh, everything in the description down below. Yep. We're on Facebook. We're on all that. We put out the show Tuesday through Friday. Friday the full show. Clips are out Tuesdays and Thursdays. But Tuesday the full audio show. And they'll do it. So until next time. That was some shit we like. Baby.